Welcome into the Alabama Football Report. I am your host, Chris Daughtry. Football is back, and that means our sub battles are officially back as well. We're going up against the boss, James Yoder, and the Michigan Football Report. We're only a couple days into August right now, but we are tied, and I want to you know, bump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers just a little bit. The Michigan Football Report is a whole lot bigger than us, but we do a whole lot more content with them. James being the boss, he's got to do boss stuff as well also. So, you know, we can definitely get a jump on them. So make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the Alabama Football Report. We're going to be doing some position battles today. There's a lot of different things going on for the Alabama Crimson Tide this year. A lot of different position battles, whether that be the offensive line or, you know, different battles on defense. I've got five different battles that I really want to hit on on today's show. The first one is going to be at that linebacker spot. I didn't initially have this one on the list at all. I scripted this video a couple of days ago and then, you know, some different stuff came out and it seems like there might be a little bit of a battle at that linebacker position with what Kane Womack said the other day about the emergence of Justin Jefferson. This is what he said after Alabama's uh, practice the other day. He said, I think Justin Jefferson had an unbelievable spring and an even better summer. And really even going into fall camp, I would say Justin Jefferson is right there with the other two guys. I think we have three starter type linebackers from that position. So very impressed with him. It's kind of one of those classic cases where you get a guy from junior college that first year, sometimes the learning curve is a little bit challenging. And then all of a sudden, a year later, uh, they're right there showing tremendous production. And I think what Alabama really needs, you know, you've got, I think, your two starting linebackers in Deontay Lawson and Jahad Campbell. But if you look back to last year, too, Alabama did have Trez Marshall in that rotation before Jahad Campbell really came through and solidified himself as a starter. And Alabama really, really needs depth at the linebacker spot. I think you got some good talent with uh, Jeremiah Alexander and Justin Jefferson. I really like everything that we've seen from Justin Okoronko as well. But the injuries last year for Deontay Lawson really held him out a little bit. During the old Miss game, only played 18 snaps, had to come out because of that angle injury. Missed the entire uh, Mississippi State game, came out at halftime of the LSU game, and then also missed the Kentucky game and the Chattanooga game. So with Deontay Lawson, you know, I understand it was last year. He's had, you know, plenty of time to get healthy, but those injury concerns are still there. And it's really nice to know, you know, you hear Kane Womack say that Justin Jefferson is a starter along with those guys, not just, you know, the backup, a really solid backup. He put him in that starter category with them. So if either one of those guys, guys go down, I got full faith in Justin Jefferson going out there and being able to get the job done for the Crimson Tide. So let me know in the comments section right now, guys. Do you think Justin Jefferson will have a breakout season here in 2024? He is a senior now, so it is his last shot. Let me know. It is the pinned comment of today's video. So if that ad comes here on YouTube, that's totally fine. You can just ignore that ad. Go down there to the pinned comment and type Y for yes or N for no. The next position battle I want to talk about is at that wide receiver position. I think you got your three main guys with Jeremy Bernard, Kobe Prentice, and uh, Kendrick Law are going to be your three main guys there. But the rotation around this uh, wide receiver room, it's going to be really big. How are they going to use those guys? Because they're not just going to use three guys. They're probably going to use probably a rotation of six or seven, I would assume, at this wide receiver position. And I really like what Nick Sheridan said about the wide receivers after yesterday yesterday's practice, he said, I think they're improving. I think Coach Shep is doing a great job. I like the depth there. I like the competition. There's obviously an influx in young players in that room, and there's some veterans that have that have really grasped the offense, the techniques, the fundamentals, the scheme. You obviously see the explosiveness in the speed in that room. Coach Shep has done a great job of rotating those guys. They're going to need them all, or we're going to need them all. I think this season, more than any before, with that length of the season, you're going to need the depth and the competition at all the positions, and certainly that's been one. Alabama's wide receiver room is about as solid as any other 
positional group that they have on this team right now. It's just about, you know, the experience. Jeremy Bernard, Kobe Prentice, really your two main guys with the most experience when it comes to, you know, actual production that they've actually put up. Kendrick Law, I think he's going to be a guy that, you know, they can use in a variety of different ways. Um, and then you got so many guys like Emmanuel Henderson, Cole Adams, you heard you know, uh, I think it was Coach Shep the other day said, that, you know, he can do it all. He's that do it all gadget kind of guy. Caleb Odom, don't rule him out of anything. Jaron Hamilton, I've really liked what I've seen from him so far from the videos out there from fall camp. And then Ryan Williams, there's just been a lot of glowing words about Ryan Williams so far. You know, I don't want to put these massive expectations on a freshman. Nick Saban always talked about that. You don't want to put those expectations on such a young kid, but Ryan Williams, absolutely going to be a guy that's going to contribute for Alabama this year. And, you know, the the real big kicker is it's really hard, or, you know, it's really tough that Jalen Hale is out for the season because, I mean, if he was, Alabama could have one of the best wide receiver rooms, pure talent-wise, in the country. And I still think they can, but they're just going to have to, uh, you know, get that experience on the field. And we're just going to have to see them put up that production to really you know, grow that confidence, I think, with what they can do in that wide receiver room. Today's show is presented by Game Time, and, you know, Major League Baseball is getting down to the, you know, final couple months here, and, you know, I really love going to, over to Atlanta every single time I get a chance to go catch a Braves game. You know, they haven't been the best this year, so many injuries, but, you know, they're still there. They're still in the hunt. And prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to first pitch. And with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest prices guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And with Alabama football just a month away now, you can get tickets to see the Crimson Tide in action. Super simple. Just go to that Game Time app, find Alabama football tickets. They're going to be right there for you. And Game Time has so many other things, not just sporting events. They've got comedy, they've got music, they've got concerts, they've got so many things on the Game Time app. And they've got just so many things that I love in a ticketing app. They've got those last minute. Um, tickets. They've got all-in prices. They've got those views from your seat so you don't get blocked out by like a foul pole or something like that. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Check out GameTime.co for last-minute tickets. Terms do apply, but again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS. That's C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, CHATSPORTS, for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. The third positional battle that I really want to go into now is that wolf position. And we've talked about this a lot. You've got three main dudes at that wolf position that I think are really going to, you know, put forth a good effort to whoever's going to be the starter at that position. Your main guy right now, it's got to be Quandarius Robinson. I mean, he's been in or he's been at Alabama the longest out of any of these guys. Keanu Coat, though, man, I really like what I've seen from Keanu Coat. I just think he's been playing faster. I think he's been playing freer with more confidence. But then you also have Quay Russo there as well. Like I said, going back to Keanu Coat, he hasn't played much this season or in his career last season, only four tackles, I believe. Yeah, only 22 defensive snaps last year for Alabama. But at the end of the day, there was a lot of talent, and there has been a lot of talent at this outside linebacker position for the Crimson Tide the past couple of years. So, you know, you can't really blame him for not being able to get on the field with guys like, you know, Dallas Turner, Will Anderson, and others. Just so much talent. I think Keanu Coates really going to be able to step up and fill a void because really it's going to be a really I think it's going to be him and Quandarius Robinson as those main two guys and Quandarius Robinson I think is very very talented but he just hasn't been able to get on the field on the defensive side of the field for Alabama he's played a lot of special teams in his career but you know I think you know he's got that talent it's just whether or not he is able to you know put it all together and really be able to make an impact on the defensive side of the ball. The other two wolf positions you have, or players you have, uh, Quay Russo, Jan Zapier. I think a lot of people overlook Jan Zapier just because, you know, Quay Russo was in that class. 
that was just so special for Alabama in 2023. Also coming in with uh, James Smith. Also, they, you know, they came in as a quote-unquote package deal together. But at the end of the day, Yonze Pierre was higher ranked in those 2023 rankings than Quay Russell. Now, I think Quay Russell has been able to come in to Alabama's you know, weight room, get in the facility, and at the end of the day, just be able to you know, improve probably faster than Yonze Pierre was. But, man, I cannot wait till Yonze Pierre gets his chance because I think he's going to be really, really good as well. So let me know in the comments section right now, guys, who is going to start for the Crimson Tide at that Wolf position? You think it's going to be Quandarius Robinson type one? If you think it's going to be Keanu Coat type two, or if you think Quay Russo can get up there and jump both of those guys type three right now in the comment section. I think one of the biggest positional battles that we've been talking about since the transfer portal opened up back in January has been that cornerback spot. Alabama got really, really thin at that cornerback spot after that transfer portal opened up and a lot of guys left. But I think they were able to get some guys from the transfer portal themselves and as well as that really, really talented you know, defensive back class that Nick Saban was able to bring in, bringing in, what, three, four, five-star guys in that DB room was really big, and it really helped out with Alabama – you know, with that depth, what they are able to bring into the season this year. This is what Kane Womack said the other day about which DBs in particular have been impressing so far. He said, I think right off the bat, Damani Jackson, Xavier and Brown have been really impressive. And I think if you look at that, or if you look at Jalen Mbakwe, he has probably made the greatest strides over the last six months. And then I would say all three of those freshmen, Zabian Brown, Jalen Mbakwe, Zay Mincy, I think are taking steps in the right direction. And of course, Deshaun Jones. It's great to have him from Wake Forest. I think Deshaun Jones right now, if, if the season starts today, Deshaun Jones is probably going to be your other starter at corner. Damani Jackson, I pretty much assume that he's going to be the guy over on the other cornerback spot. But man, these freshmen have really, really been you know, creating a lot of headlines in the cornerback room. And I'm really excited to see if one of those guys can possibly, you know, push for a starting role. I think it's really interesting. I think, you know, Jaleel Hurley's really good as well. But I think it's really interesting that he was not a guy that, you know, has really been talked about by the coaching staff pushing for one of those cornerback spots. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with Jaleel Hurley because it seems right now it's kind of Deshaun Jones and then those other three freshmen that have really been making, making a name for themselves so far here in fall camp. So let me know in the comment section right now, who do you think is going to be that other cornerback spot for the Crimson Tide this year? If you think it's Deshaun Jones, type DJ. If you think it's going to be Jaleel Hurley, type JH. Or if you think it's one of those freshmen, go, go ahead and type FR in the comments. I think the biggest position battle right here is this one right here at that right tackle spot. You know, there's been just a, a lot of kind of, you know, fluctuation when it comes to to the offensive line so far here in fall camp. You know, we've seen Elijah Pritchett over there at that left tackle spot. Today's left tackle, Caden Proctor up there with the ones at left tackle. Miles McVeigh as that left tackle too. And then Wilkin Formby actually over there as the starting right tackle going with the ones. You know, we'll see how that progresses. Obviously, Elijah Pritchett is going to get some of those reps with the ones. It's not Wilkin Formby and then Elijah Pritchett right now. I got a feeling that this positional battle is probably going to go into the season as well. I don't think it's going to be, you know, sorted out here in fall camp because uh, what Elijah Pritchett did good last year when he got a chance to play, obviously only 95 snaps, but he was really good in the run game. He really needs to work on those pass blocks. Now, last year he was at that left tackle position. We'll see if, you know, going over to the right side, taking over possibly for J.C. Latham, if it's a little bit easier of a transition for him. But, you know, I think it hurts him a little bit, the fact that uh, Wilkin Forby has really been taking a lot of those snaps at right tackle, and he has been at that left tackle spot with um, with uh, Caden Proctor not being there for the spring and, you know, coming through, uh, through the summertime and everything like that. But 
Wilkin Forby came in with the talent, man. Four-star recruit, number 90 overall. The number 11 player from Alabama. I really like Wilkin Forby. I really like his size. And I really think him and Elijah Pritchett, I don't think it's going to be a battle that really gets sorted out this fall. It's probably going to go, I would assume, probably at least two, three games into the season before we really figure out who that starting right tackle is going to be. So the last time to get in the comments section right now for us, Pick a right tackle by the end of the season. By the end of the season, who is going to be the starting right tackle for the Crimson Tide? Type EP for Elijah Pritchett or WF for Wilkin Formby.